Hey guys, welcome back to another innovation review. My name is Mitch and this is the Cy Rusher Rumble. Now, this is a little bit different of a bike than Cy Rusher has done before. It's got the fat tires, kind of got that aesthetic to it. However, there's something that's kind of interesting about it and that is the price point. So, what is that price point? Well, before we get to that, let's talk about some of the big features here. So, we've got a 500 watt motor here in the rear, hydraulic brakes, and an 18, that's right, one eight amp hour batteries here. And we've got a foldable stem up here, so it folds down and can slide in the back of an SUV without having to you know, take off the front tire or anything like that, which is kind of convenient. And all of this is only $9.99. So let's talk about all the specs and see if this really is a true value e-bike. Now, as we're diving into the rumble review, let's talk about some of the big things first. Now, we already mentioned this motor here in the rear is a 500 watt. This is a geared hub motor. As far as motor noise goes, not too bad. Got about 65 newton meters of torque, although with the 20 inch wheels here, it does feel like it is a little bit closer to 70, 75. It does have a little bit of get up and go. Now, with the throttle, it's actually in sync with our pedal assist level, which I'm not a huge fan of. However, we'll get to more of that in the ride test. But as it stands, this 500 watt motor feels pretty nice, pretty nimble. The bike itself only weighs about 70 pounds. So it's not a super light bike, but you know, 500 watts here in the back does get this moving pretty good. So, you know, it is what it is as far as that goes. The next thing that is a big thing to talk about is the battery. So this is a lockable and removable 18 amp hour battery. It is placed right here behind our seat post area, and which is kind of nice. It does give us a lower center of gravity. If it were in the down tube, you know, we'd have an even lower center of gravity. However, this seems pretty nice kind of underneath your weight, and I think makes a lot of sense. And the fact that it's 18 amp hours is pretty, it's pretty darn impressive, especially when we're thinking about the price point of $9.99, getting an 18 amp hour battery. I mean, really, if you were to look for a replacement battery, maybe not this exact style, but for some of the other brands that are popular out there on the market, I mean, those are anywhere between 350 to 600 bucks to get something that's either 15 to 20 amp hours, kind of depending on who we're talking about. That's from the shop level, you know, us, us getting that and reselling it. So the fact that on a 999 bike, we've got a bigger battery here is really one of the things that's blown my mind about the bike. Now, range-wise, what are you gonna get out of 18 amp hours? Well, for 15, you're usually looking at anywhere between like 35 to 45. So for an extra 18, you're probably really getting closer to 60 miles of range if you are pedaling the bike. If you're just gonna throttle it, you're probably gonna cut that down to about 35, but if you're doing some pedaling, and the gearing here is not bad, again, we'll get to that a little bit later in the ride review section, you probably might be able to get 60 miles out of this bike, maybe even a little bit more depending on your weight and the terrain you're going on. So all in all, right out of the gate, just those main first two specs, I think those are pretty impressive. Now it does come with a full set of fenders. These are a you know cheaper, a little bit more flimsy plastic fender, but they do have good coverage here on the rear tire and decent coverage here on the front. I mean, it would be cool if this went back a little bit further. You can see we're getting a little bit of dirt here up on the frame. I was doing some, some off-road riding with it. So yeah, I mean, it comes with the fenders. I think that is pretty nice. We do have integrated lights. So we've got our integrated front light right here. Integrated rear light in here. And to turn those on, I'm gonna turn the bike on. Press and hold the power button there. Got it on. We're gonna press our light button. Get a little light indicator over here. Dims the screen, which is nice. If you're riding around at night, you'll notice it. So some of these screens, they don't dim when you turn the lights on. And kind of a con in my opinion, because if you're really out there like at night, even though it's not super bright out here in the sun, it is actually pretty bright at night. So the fact that it dims, I think is pretty nice. So our front light comes on. Kaboom, our rear light comes on over here. And just to check if we've got braking integration. Looks like we don't, we do have braking integration on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off and you can see the rear lights coming on. Not super bright with the brake light, as far as I can tell, but it is there. So if somebody's looking, they are gonna be able to see that you are you know, coming to a stop, which is a nice safety feature. We do right here on the bottom also have a horn Wow. That's loud. That is very loud to be coming out of this little light. Um, 
yeah, definitely a nice safety feature in my opinion, having, having a horn like that. Now we don't have sidewall reflective stripes on the tires here, just kind of talking about the safety things, but we do have hydraulic brakes. So we got these DY Island, I like to call them the do-it-yourself land brakes. Um, they're not really do-it-yourself, it comes fully assembled like this, the brake lever at least. And we do have motor cutoff cables here, so that means that if we are you know, going and we go ahead and squeeze the brakes just a little bit like this, before we actually do the mechanical like braking down here at the calipers, it's gonna cut off power to the motor, which is a nice safety thing. Most of the e-bikes have them these days. Very rare to see you know, just traditional hydraulic brakes on an electric bike, but it does happen. But it is nice that we have this here, especially when we got speeds and you know, we're able to go about 28 miles per hour on this thing we can stop the bike really well and, and pretty efficiently. We've also got seven gears over here. So we've got our Shimano SIS index shifter here. That is connected back here to our Shimano tourney derailleur. Now tourney is kind of like the low end as far as Shimano goes, but the fact that it's Shimano, you know, we like to see Shimano stuff on bikes like this. As far as the brakes, just kind of going back to those, it would be nice to see Tektros. They're a little bit more standard than the DIY Island ones, but the DIY Island ones work well. We've seen those on a couple of bikes, like um, some of the Frigo bikes come with these. The Flash actually comes with quad piston DIY Island brakes, and those are pretty nice actually in some of the testing I've done so far. So the fact that, you know, the brakes work pretty well, you know, saying, you know, I wish they were Tektro, really just a small knock here. I'm just, you know, looking for components. We've got Shimano as far as the gearing goes so for the brakes Tektra would be cool to see but these ones do work well and I have had a pretty good experience with them so far over here on the display it's gonna show us our miles per hour our level of pedal assist which we changed with this dial right here it goes all the way up to five and if we press the power button nothing happens if we press the I button over here it's gonna take us between trip odometer our max speed our average speed Pretty much, you, pretty much what you got there as far as that goes so we'll leave it on trip and the display is pretty simple again over here we've got our light button we press this turns the lights on we don't have to press and hold anything usually it's a press and hold on the top or the plus button that'll turn on the lights with a lot of these displays with a lot of these bikes but we just have a little light button there which i think is is pretty interesting now as far as usbs we don't have anything else extra to talk about as far as the display goes it is color um, it is fairly bright it's reflecting the sun pretty well but it's actually pretty easy to see the way that uh, all these colors come across in real life over here on the right hand side we've got our twist throttle so we pop the bike back and do this and kaboom we're going now like i had mentioned this is in sync with our level of pedal assist so right now we're only going 12 miles per hour if we put this into Five, so we're in pedal level five now. That'll get us up to really about 26, 28 miles an hour or so. Um, it was hitting 30 right there, but that's just because we've got no, nothing slowing this down, no ground, no weight, anything like that. Now, while we're back here, I would like to talk about this rack. And what's interesting about the rack is if you look at it from the side, you can see it's elevated and then it kind of has a nice platform here. We've got spots for mounting, you know, rear baskets, things like that, which is, which is nice. A lot of people, you know, they want the option to carry some extra stuff with them. You throw, you know, you can throw a, a trunk bag back here. The rack is fairly wide. So I think a lot of those Velcro ones will work really well, but you've also got the spot to mount a basket if you want to. The tires, like we'd mentioned, these are 20 by fours more of an off-road tread to them. You see we've got some, some treads here in the middle, treads on the sides. Now the treads on the sides are really what we're looking at when we're looking at like off-road capabilities, but we do have some good off-road capabilities here. Now it has been raining, so we probably won't take it off-road today in our ride test portion, but we will go through the gears, see how everything shifts. We'll see if we get any ghost pedaling, things like that. As I mentioned earlier, this is a folding stem. So we do have a little safety latch here. Pop that, pop this down and this folds down like so. So it does make the height of it fairly small. And like I'd mentioned, it does fit in the back of a you know, 2020 Subaru. I've done that with this one, not having to break it down, which is nice. So anything that's similar or even a little bit taller, looking at Sequoias, other types of 
SUVs that are I'm blanking on right now, that will probably fit this pretty well. So all in all, really a lot of decent specs here. We do have front suspension. Now these are Cyrusher branded. I'm not sure exactly who the, the maker is on these, but we do have lockout capabilities here. And we've got preload adjustments on this side. Now usually on these smaller forks, the preload doesn't really do a whole lot. So don't expect to really get this dialed in, but the way it comes, you know, it does its job. It's, it's suspension, right? It's gonna take off a lot of the bumps and little things running over some of these cracks and stuff. It's gonna absorb a lot of that. And the fact that we've got these larger four inch tires, we've already got extra air volume in here. So it is gonna make this kind of a little bit more of a comfortable ride right out the gate. And so really, I mean, those are some of the meat and potatoes on the bike. I think the next thing to do is head outside for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here. We've got our helmet on. We're gonna do a little ride test on this thing. Let's go ahead and circle it around. All right, so like I mentioned, our throttles and see with our pedals. So let's start out in zero. Actually, let's do it in one because I forgot to downshift per use. All right, so now we're in zero. Go ahead and pedal off this like a regular bike. Zero, we're in third, fourth. Fourth is probably a good, a good cruising gear, I would say. If you're gonna pedal it without the bike on, five's not bad. Seven does take a little bit of extra work here. Cruising at like 10 miles an hour. Yeah, I'd say five is probably the, the best just cruise around gear if you don't have the bike on. Let's go ahead and put it into one. That is gonna take us to 11 miles an hour. Put it into two. Now this is cadence. So basically the difference between, you'll, you'll see a lot of things that talk about like torque sensors, cadence sensors. Cadence sensors, there's basically just magnets in there. And as the cranks go around, it's basically on or off as far as your power. And then our pedal assist level is gonna dictate what our top speed is gonna be in that pedal assist level. Whereas with torque sensors, it actually senses how hard you press down and it's gonna give you an appropriate amount of motor power based on that. So even though I'm not really putting any effort into pedaling here, we're still going up to you know, 18 miles an hour. So go ahead and jump this up into fifth. And again, not really putting any effort into it, but we will do a run where we're trying to put effort into it and see when we get to some ghost pedaling, if we get to some ghost pedaling. So again, they got the gearing set up here. So again, cruising up to, so it'll do 28. We're at, uh, yeah, about 30% battery. These brakes are doing a good job. And again, I mean, I mentioned like it'd be cool to see Tektros, but really I can lock these things out. I'm not gonna do that one-handed, but it is, it is pretty nice. All right, so let's go ahead. We're in seventh gear. Let's see when we start getting some, some ghost pedaling. Not too bad so far. Twenty-five still not bad. So once we once we're hitting like twenty-six, it starts to get a little fast as far as like my pedal cadence goes, in order to still be putting in some some effort there. But if you're looking to cruise twenty miles or you know twenty miles per hour or less, you don't get any ghost pedal in there, which is nice. We've seen some bikes 17, 18 miles an hour, the gearing's jacked up, but here it seems like they got the gearing pretty much on point for. Really up to 20 miles per hour is not bad. I'd say 25's probably where it starts to feel like a little bit, you know, hamster in a cage, hamster in a wheel sort of sort of vibe. But it's really not too bad. And again, it's cadence, so you want to pedal slow, you can. Which is what we're doing. And we're still getting 27, 28 miles per hour out of it. Now 
Now the delay on this particular cadence sensor, it's pretty noticeable. Let's go ahead and start pedaling. But half a rotation, so it starts up pretty good. And then when we stop, let's see, so I'm gonna go stop, off. It's not too bad. Now with cadence sensors, they're in general designed to be a little bit of a delay there because if it was a little if it was any less delay the whole thing would feel a little bit jerky so as soon as you stop pedaling or you pedal for a second and you know kind of come back around it would cut off so the whole thing would be a little bit more of a jerky ride so with cadence sensors they kind of have to build in some of that delay there so the rest of it can feel smooth but just know you know and when you stop pedaling it's going to be about stop then the motor's going to cut out so something to get used to but if you're somebody who is looking for more of a traditional bike feel uh, torque sensor is definitely the way to go. I think for this particular bike, again, got the, the 20 inch wheels on it. Feels okay having a cane sensor. But it is something you got to get used to if you are coming from the traditional bike world. Whereas with a torque sensor, because of the way it's built, it can be a little bit more tuned to be you know, off quicker, on quicker. Then uh, that might be something that's a little bit more comfortable for you. I mean, all in all, it's a fairly smooth riding bike, um, fairly maneuverable. Now those front tires do want to pull a little bit, just because our rake angle down there at the bottom, you can see down here, it's not very slack. So there's not a huge angle in between like our steer post and the ground. A little bit more straight up and down, which is, that's, you're going to feel that when you go into those turns. You'll feel the front tires kind of pulling a little bit more because they're they're fat like that but really all in all it's a fairly smooth riding bike and guys I think that is going to cover it for our review on the rumble if you got any questions for me let me know down below I'll have a link to their website you can check out sort of some of the other specs some stuff we didn't cover but again if you got any questions you want to compare this with a different bike that's on the market kind of going back and forth between them let me know in the comments love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one